Hi guys, Paul here. Um, before we start this tutorial, um, I need you to go to the website uh, DeFont and download the font called Sierra Madre. It's free, um, doesn't cost anything, so install it on your system. Okay, today's tutorial is the third and last in a series of Art Deco uh, tutorials that I did. And I was going to do Batman, but upon looking on the internet, I you know, there's a lot of Batman on there that have been given the Art Deco treatment, so I decided to choose uh, Spy vs. Spy from the Mag Comics. Now I'm going to stylize it a fair bit, I'm going to get rid of the arms, I'm going to straighten the legs, and I'm going to uh, simplify the shapes, but still keep the um, overall look of the character recognizable. So let me just close that, and the first part of the tutorial I'm going to do in Adobe Illustrator, so I can lay out my shapes and then bring them forward into Photoshop and give them the treatment in there. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is create a print document. Um, I want A4 and I'll click OK and my artboard will pop up. Okay so the first thing I want to do here is I want to bring out a guide to use as a, uh, as a line to build my character above. So just like Photoshop if I hit Control R it'll bring up the rulers and I can drag out a guide and that'll do fine. Next thing I want to do is create the body so if I go to the shapes tool here and I choose ellipse I'm going to click and drag out an ellipse. Now what you'll see is it has a black outline with a white fill color on it which is reflected here white fill black stroke. So let's bring the stroke forward by clicking on it and then turning it off by clicking on this little square with a red line through it. And then bring the fill color forward and then I'll click in this little black square here on the color selector and that'll turn it black. Okay so far so good. So the next thing I need to do is modify this shape. So I'm going to choose the rectangle tool and I'm going to click and drag a shape straight over the top of that so it completely covers it and slices through the middle. And then I'll select both the objects. And if you don't have this window open already, what we can do is go to Window and Pathfinder. And with both objects selected, choose Minus Front and that'll cut away that half of it. Now I'm going to do the same for the bottom, so completely cover it, select both objects and then choose minus front. And I might lengthen that a little bit. Okay, that'll do and I'll drag it down somewhere there, that looks good. And I'll zoom in. So I've created the body, so I'll just double click on the word layer 1 in here change that to body. Okay, so once the body's been created I'll create a new layer by choosing the new layer icon and I'll call it a forward leg. And I'll drag it the layer underneath the body layer making sure that the forward leg layer is selected. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create my uh, legs and feet, so I'll choose the pen tool and I'll just click inside here somewhere and then run a line down, click again, click again, click again, run up to the end here and then I'll close the shape off. Now what I want to do here also is I want to line everything up, so I'll zoom up a little bit and I'm going to use the direct select tool. What that will allow me to do is actually select that anchor point and then I can move it just using the arrows on my keyboard. I might select this point here and move it back and this point as well. That'll do. Let me zoom out and have a look. Okay, that's looking alright. Okay, next thing I want to do is duplicate this leg. So, 
I'll select the leg, copy it with Control C, and then I'll create a new layer. And I'll drag it underneath the forward leg and I'll change its name to back leg. And I'll click OK. Now making sure that you're on the back leg layer, paste it. Control V. And I'll drag it around and zoom up. Now, uh, to rotate it, all I'll simply do is use this rot rotate tool, so make sure the object's selected, then I can rotate it. Okay, then I'll move it into position. That'll do fine. I might move it up a little bit. I might use a direct select tool and clean this up a little bit, so I'll move this leg in a little bit. I want a bit of shape there, and I'll pull this point down. Pulling this one out. Zoom out. Okay, that's not looking too bad. So I might move that point over. Okay, that's good. Okay. Uh, next thing we need to do is create the head, so I'll zoom up. Now the head will sit on top of the body, so I'll create a new layer. I'll go to the body layer, create a new layer. It'll create one st uh, straight on top, and I'll choose, I'll change its name to head. And use the pen tool again. Click. Click. And close it. Now I've roughly done that because I can modify it using the direct select tool. So what I want to do is I want to keep that's like the top point there. I want to keep this um, slightly right of the vertical. Um, I'll drag this down a little bit. Up. That'll do. Um, also, yeah, I'll move that point back in a little bit more. That'll do. Okay, so what I need to, once I've got that shape fixed up, I need to uh, create a hat. So I'll create a new layer, and I'll call this brim. Use my pen tool again, and I'll quickly rough out a shape, remembering to close it off. Okay, that's pretty rough, so what I need to do is uh, modify it a bit, so I'll choose both these points at once, and I'll, whoops, both points. Same with this point, lower it a little bit. I'll also bring it in. He's just using the arrows on my keyboard. That's fine. That's not looking too bad. Okay, once I've done that, I'll create a new layer. And I'll call it... Hat. And I'll simply use the pen tool again and block out a rough shape and zoom up. Okay, um, direct select tool again, which will help me clean it up. 
So I'll just select the point, make a point I want. Same with this point here. Bring that one in. Bring that one in as well. Okay, that's not too bad. Okay, I need to uh, create a small uh, dip in the hat here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, pen tool again. This time I'm going to use add anchor point. I'm simply going to add a point there and a point uh, there and another one. So I've got three extra points on there. So what I'll do now is I'll use the direct select tool. I'll choose the middle of the one I just created and I'll drag that down. And that'll give me a dip in the hat. So let me just uh, zoom in. Okay, the character's nearly done. So what I'll do with that, that layer itself, I'll drag the hat under the brim. So it sits under there. I'm, I'm basically setting this up for uh, future use in Photoshop. Okay, so <clears throat> once I've got that, I'll just lock all those layers. And what I want to do is I want to create layers underneath here. So whenever I create a layer, I will um, drag it underneath. Um, a new layer, and I'll drag it underneath everything. And what I'll call it is clouds. Making sure that you're on the layer. I'm also going to change my foreground color to around 50% black, so it becomes a grey. And for the clouds, all I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to use ellipses. So if I choose the ellipse tool, I can create one there. Then I can hold the Alt key down using the Move tool. And I can select, drag, drag that down as well. Drag that up. Drag that down, push that in so it's smaller, same again, just using Alt and copying. push that out to there like that, I might drag that down. Just rearranging some elements here. Okay, so once I've got all those clouds, uh, what I'll do is I'll select them all. Remember I've locked all these layers, so I can only select what's on the cloud layer. And once they're all selected, what I want to do with them is I want to unite them. So the first button here in the Pathfinder panel, we'll unite them. Uh, what I'll also do is drag that down a little bit and lengthen them. And I'm going to create a rectangle straight over the top of it. top and I'll select both those objects and I will use minus front again that will cut the bottom off uh, maybe too much look what's happened here so I'll just undo that with command Z select them both again Minus front, okay, that's better. Might pull it out a little bit more. What I also want to do is I want to clean it up, so I will create a rectangle again on the outside there. Select both the objects, minus front, and also on this side. Select both the objects, minus front. 
Okay, this one's not too bad. Um, next thing is I want to duplicate that, so I will duplicate that cloud layer. And I'll move this bottom one down a little bit. If I want, I can flip it over, object, transform, reflect. And I'll click OK. That's not gonna OK. I'll pull that one up a little bit. This one in front though, however, I will change its colour. So I'll change that to um, 40%, so it's a bit lighter. Now once again, I'll move it up a bit. Okay. Next thing I need is a footpath for this fellow to be walking along, so I'll just zoom up. Zoom up, I mean, zoom out. And above the clouds, I'll create a new layer. I'll rename it to Footpath. I'll use the Rectangle tool. Placing it there like that. Um, I'll move it down a little bit so it lines up. And I'll also lengthen that out a bit so we've got a clear you know, three divisions here. And I'll uh, oh, also need a moon as well. So um, behind the clouds, so I'll need a new layer. I'll drag it under and I'll call it moon. I'll use the ellipse tool, but this time I'll hold the shift key down, and what will ha happen is it'll keep it perfectly circular. And I'll give it a brighter colour, so um, I might choose 10% for that one. And we'll lock all those layers and unlock the character layers. So what I want to do here is I want to move that over a little bit. I want to select those layers. And I'll duplicate them. So now, if I move that over, you can see I have two characters. So rather than move it, what I'll actually do is I'll just reflect it. Object, Transform, Reflect. And I'll click OK. And then I'll use my, while they're still selected, I'll use my Move tool and I'll move, uh, move them over. OK, that's good. And then I'll select them both, and I'll move them towards the centre. And then I'll save that file, save as spy. So the desktop is an Illustrator file, AI, Adobe Illustrator, save, OK. And I'll stop recording there, uh, ready for the next video, which is uh, exporting into Photoshop and uh, adding the effects in there.